Hello, Zoom community, can you hear me? Yes, okay, great. So good morning for our day of practice together. Yes, my name is Nakwe, I'm not sure you, if you weren't here last night. Um, my name is Nakwe Cuevas Berrios and I made the journey from the East Coast over here to Minnesota. And I'm very happy to be here on Common Ground. I passed through several years ago and uh, it's a beautiful community and this center is just lovely. So I've been just admiring and feeling the, uh, the energy here. It's very beautiful of community. So this day of practice is kind of practicing together in community, right, in Sangha. And um, as we know, the, the three refuges, taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, the Sangha is very important, you know, it's part of our spiritual journey. So that when we come together to practice, it's very powerful, you know, so we create a beautiful container to practice together. So in opening, we um, open this day, we ask for guidance, you know, we're here together, we ask for guidance of the ancestors, our spirit guides, um, our community, um, the native people of this land, we just take in all these different forces to help us in our practice today. And the, the wider we can bring up our awareness of what's sitting, it's not only does this body, but you know we widen our awareness into this greater community of fellow human beings on this journey, of the planet, of the earth, of the sun, of the moon. Um, so all of this widening of awareness that we're sitting not only as a solitary, independent human being, but that we're very interconnected with so much more than what we usually have this small, you know, very constricted frame of reference. So it's nice to remember that, that we're sitting with this beautiful um, essence of Sangha and that the Sangha is very wide to include all the little beings, the creatures, our pets, our doggies, cats, ants, trees. You know, it's been beautiful with the springtime, just kind of absorbing all the energy of the buds starting to open up and and yesterday I was taking a walk and the tulips were just like, I just kept on, it was almost like I was just totally mesmerized inside this tulip. It was just the colors and the nature's amazing, you know? And um, just soaking it in. It's a beautiful day today. So we'll do some walking. You can walk outside too. So that's a blessing. So yeah, so the theme of the today will be just group practice, community practice, and how important the um, the sangha to you know to uh, practice together in sangha in community in the Zoom community and also here in our community here at Common Ground. I was just going to read a little bit about uh, something that Thich Nhat Hanh used to make a lot about sangha. You know, he spoke a lot about sangha. So this is something that he wrote. As practitioners, we know very well that without a Sangha, we cannot go far. The Sangha is our body, and we are like the cells of the same organism. When we walk, we walk as one. When we sit, we sit as one. We move along as a river. These are beautiful words of Thich Nhat Hanh about just touching into the essence of practicing in community and how beautiful it is. So um, he also wrote a beautiful piece. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> also, he wrote about sangha as being these um, these islands taking refuge because again, it's this one of the three refuges. Sangha is the, the importance of sangha. So he talks about here as. Um, first of all, to take refuge in the islands of ourselves and the islands of a Sangha. These islands are community of resistance. Resistance does not mean to oppose others. It means to protect ourselves, like staying inside the house to protect ourselves from the weather. We resist from being destroyed by society's pollution, noise, unhappiness, harsh words, and negative behaviors. If we do not know how to take care of ourselves, we may get wounded and be unable to help others. 
If we join with others to build a Sangha that can nourish and protect us and resist society's destructiveness, we will be able to return home. This is also Thich Nhat Hanh. So the beauty of, you know, just the essence of what Sangha really means and that I love the way he talks about just, um, it's a protection, it's a refuge. And we know um, when we think about society and what's going on and um, all the the um, the lying and the you know the, the values just are not wholesome. You know a lot of them politicians lie and we you know in culture of consumerism we're told just keep on buying and you'll be happy. You know and all of these different messages that we get um, we pull away from all of that. You know so sangha is like a refuge where we could come together and really be um, soaking in wholesomeness. You know and that's the beauty of it. We can just come together, meditate together. And to hold that container, you know, as we're sitting today together, um, to hold that, that really we are sitting in this wholesome field of energy compared to what's going on outside. And that we can always have come back to this refuge, you know, within ourselves, as I was speaking about last night, about the, the equanimity that we have in our hearts, and also in community that we hold this container of protection, you know, so that we can um, we can let go of the all the different narratives and all the stories and all the programs and, you know, the madness that's going on out here, we can come together and just practice together in something wholesome, in something more, um, you know, loving and kind and generous, all these beautiful heart qualities that um, we cultivate on this beautiful path of Buddhism, that we can cultivate these qualities together. And uh, that will help us to be stronger. So when we do go out there and we are in those currents, those worldly winds, as I was talking about last night, that we have an inner base, an inner calm, that we can face all these different things. So that's the importance of Sangha, of meditating together. So I wanted to bring that piece about what we'll be doing today. And then the other pieces uh, that I wanted to just kind of t touch on is, of course, the preciousness of of taking a day like this. You know, it's very precious to be able to stop our lives for a moment, um, pause, say I'm coming into practice together to take, dedicate this day just to practice. It's a beautiful thing and it's a great gift. It's a great gift of, um, of love and compassion for ourselves. You know, so just to take that in also that this is a beautiful gift that we're doing, we're giving ourselves to, to, to take this day together of practice. And just to um, just feeding that cultivation of continuity of mindfulness, right? So we'll definitely just keep on building moment after moment the continuity of mindfulness. So can we, while we're just listening here, are we embodied? Can we feel the seat underneath us, the floor? Um, come again, making everything into practice, and in that this continuity of mindfulness, whatever we do today, whether we're eating whether we're walking, whether we're sitting, standing, just completely embodied, completely present here. And we're helping to build uh, this beautiful practice of continuity of mindfulness. This is, a, this is a day that we're dedicating to that. And that's a precious gift to be able to do that. So just um, taking that in, you know, that all of these things nourish the heart. You know, it's nourishing refuge, it's nourishing the heart to know that we're giving ourselves this gift, you know, so that resonates in our hearts. And we'll be practicing um, embodiment from last night when we were talking about um, being present, doing the first foundation of mindfulness, um, how we come back into taking um, embodiment, you know, the practice, a lot of times we're so much into the um, conceptual realm, right? We read a lot of books and we, we're constantly thinking thoughts, perhaps even about the Dhamma, you know, it's a very conceptual world. So how do we take these teachings and do we embody them, you know, come into this embodied presence, taking the teachings inside so that they really become a part of who we are. And so again, this is a great opportunity to use the first foundation, which um, Buddha started with the four foundations um, of mindfulness, as many of you probably are already familiar. Uh, there are kind of grounds where we can rest our awareness and our attention. So the first one was the body, the breath and the body. So in the importance that he gave that as being the first foundation, 
You know, so today, again, we'll just practice again with this first foundation. So when we're walking, we know we're walking. When we're sitting, we know when we're sitting. If we're lying down, we know we're lying down. When we're standing, we know we're standing. So each posture, we're totally embodied. We're in the body, feeling the earth, feeling the different sensations in the body. So again, this day of continuity of practice helps to uh, deepen that first foundation. And it's a great resource um, to do this. As I was saying last night, a lot of the uh, the body becomes, the body is present, right? It's present in this moment. It's not in the past, it's not in the future. It's totally brings us into presence when we can become embodied with our awareness. So by um, using this beautiful refuge of first foundation and body awareness, we're building that refuge. So whatever is going through the mind, whatever emotional states or mental states or, or uh, whatever, worrying or uh, worrying about the future or thinking about the past, whatever it is, it's within this framework of the body. So you have like a container to settle in and allow these different mental states and emotions to arise and pass away arise and pass away as it, it's their nature to do. But we're using this container of body just to kind of hold it all. So this again, practice, you know, a lot of it is about um, practicing this and making it something that is just nature. It's like your nature. So this is again, today uh, we'll be able to keep on continuing this continuity of mindfulness and awareness, such a precious gift to do this. So when we spoke, when I spoke about uh, equanimity and uh, last night, I was saying that my first teacher, Mr. Goenka, used to um, say, "Whatever sensations, stay equanimous." You know, he always used to say, "Equanimous, equanimity with all sensations that come and go." So we can practice that today. You know, how is it just to stay steady and stable and centered with whatever's arising in the mind and heart? You know, watching its nature, which is a to arise and pass away. Can we do that today? So we're just practicing again um, this beautiful way of holding experience, you know, so that we're not attaching to anything. We're just allowing the mind to do its thing. The mind thinks, okay, the mind thinks, but we don't have to attach to it. We can let it arise and pass away as it will continually do. So um of using that equanimity, you know, can we just stay steady with whatever's arising? Can we stay open, spacious? Uh, can we use kindness? You know, can we surround whatever's occurring in our experience today with kindness, with spaciousness, with curiosity? You know, sometimes curiosity is such a beautiful quality in the Dhamma. It's like, oh, wow, when I have that thought that emotional thought maybe of disappointment, my chest starts to close up or my breathing starts to, you know, get a little bit tense. And oh, look at that. You know, all of a sudden there's like this interest in exploring it because one of the things is we don't have to take it personal. These are just arisings that are happening. We can learn and explore and we start to see the connection. You know, every time I have that thought, my, my jaw clenches up, you know, well, look at that. I never noticed that before. So we have this beautiful space to really kind of explore the relationship between the mind and the body, which for me has always been such an endless exploration. You know, it's a beautiful exploration. So again, today we can, you know, investigate with curiosity, interest. The Dhamma is beautiful when you can bring interest and curiosity and playfulness. You know, it doesn't have to be grim and dim. And, you know, it's a, it can be a very a playful and joyful kind of experience. Oh, wow, look at this. I never noticed, you know, when I, when I'm walking, I never really noticed that my hips are swinging or, you know, I'm feeling a different type of movement. I never felt before. Let's look at that. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like a lot of interest that we can start to take in our practice, curiosity, joy, that we're exploring this, this body mind connection. And it's an endless exploration. You know, and it's really interesting when we don't take it personal, like, oh my God, I'm a failure. Oh, I'm not doing it right. Oh, am I, you know, not following the instructions? The self comes in and starts to constrict and tense up. But we can open it up and say, wow, this is just the human experience. Let me explore that and see, you know, what it's all about. 
So this again is an invitation today to bring those attitudes of curiosity, spaciousness, openness, kindness, you know, to whatever arises in our experience, in our moment to moment experience. So this is another invitation today that we'll be exploring. And then with the, uh, what I was speaking about Vedana last night, um, Vedana, so we'll have pleasant, some pleasant sensations, some unpleasant sensations, and then some neutral, you know, so this is the nature of Vedana. So can we just notice what's, what's coming, you know, what's arising? And again, meet it with curiosity, with openness, with spaciousness, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, because everything is part of the Dhamma. We don't reject anything. We don't say, oh, this shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be thinking this. We don't reject experience. We allow it to arise and we meet it with spaciousness, with kindness, with care. Sometimes it's something uh, we need to learn you know, about what's what's arising. So again, this sense of curiosity and of, of um, interest, non-judgment type of just, oh, wow, look at this. This is interesting. This keeps, this thought keeps on popping up, you know, what's it, what am I trying, what is it trying to say? Is there something underneath it? You know, so we start to explore with curiosity and um, this investigative factor is part of the journey of enlightenment. You know, the Buddha made mindfulness, which is what we're cultivating. And then this sense of investigation was, you know, the second factor of, um, of enlightenment. So this curiosity to really see what this is all about and how does it connect with the Dhamma to see its true nature, which is impermanent, which it's not personal, there's no self in there. And that when we attach and identify that we suffer. You know, so we can even follow that sequence, you know, during the day and see. So using everything that arises, you know, the coming back into embodiment as we walk, we sit, feeling what it is to be here present, what it is to be alive. You know, what does it really feel like to be alive and to feel that embodiment? It's a precious gift. You know, to know we the past is gone, the future is not here. This is really the only space where we're truly alive is this moment right now. So that's how what does that vitality of being present really feel like? Such a gift. So here today again we can explore this precious gift of being alive. Um, so again, just the invitation again is just to use this beautiful day um, for your own practice. You know, each of us uh, are practicing in our own way. And it may be that you already have certain practices that you do, like maybe metta or um, some of the Brahma Vihara practices. Uh, whatever it is, you can play with that during the day. You don't have to, you know, just do one type because you feel like you have to. If something that you already have a practice with, that's good. You know, this is a place to just keep on exploring whatever your practice is. But I will give some guided meditation a little bit and we'll explore uh, the embodiment factor more, the first foundation. So, uh, yeah. So as I was saying in my own journey um, with the Dhamma, the, uh, because I went in through Goenka, I really, I had a deep appreciation of um, embodiment, you know, and how important it is in this practice, in this Buddhist practice. And then as I continued on with the journey with embodiment, I realized that everything can be explored through this body. Um, and as you go deeper into deeper states of concentration, the, the, um, the foundation of, of body is really important too, because it's when we deepen our practice into concentration, it's not only about uh, the mind getting concentrated, it's the body, you know, it's together, they work together. So it's a whole experience, you know, total, total experience. So the importance of just continuing on with this. And it's a refuge because we can use it, like I said, a lot of times as an exploration of what's going on and, and, um, and be able to deepen our practice in so many ways. So today will be, an invitation to explore that further. So right now, as you're listening, can you feel your body? Can you feel the pressure of sitting on the earth, on the cushion, 
on your chair or if you're at home, if you're laying down in the bed, just kind of really tuning in to, to what's happening right now. Can you feel the space that we're in? The space of the room, there's this spaciousness around us. There's a container of spaciousness. So can we tune into that, open to that? Can you tune into the sound of my voice, hearing? So the, the, the uh, sound, the ear is picking up sounds. So that's happening within this container of, of being present in this moment. And whatever's arising in our hearts and minds, is there some fatigue or is there some curiosity? Whatever is there, just noticing what's in our own hearts and minds right now. And this is just coming into total presence with reality as it is in this moment. Not something that we want to be or should be or what it was, you know, it's like this right here, right now, is like this right now. Making any adjustments to your posture. Feeling the spine rising from the pelvis. And maybe get a, a sense of groundedness. You could feel the weight of your hip bones on the earth, your lower half of the body, really grounded on the earth, Mother Earth. And we get a sense of that stability, feeling the stability of the pelvis and the lower legs resting on the earth. Feeling the earth underneath us, nourishing and supporting us. And that gives a certain stability and groundedness and connection. Feeling the spine coming up from the pelvis, almost like um, a tree, you know, beautiful tree. Giving us support. Relaxing the shoulders. Aligning, kind of playing with the head so that it's aligned with the spine. That might be tucking in the chin a little bit just to kind of feel the strength of that whole posture. Again, this is kind of getting that, starting out with that sense of embodiment the groundedness sitting on the earth, the spine erect and everything relaxed around the spine. Loosening up anything if you need to shake something out. Relaxing the jaw. A lot of times we hold a lot of tension in our jaw. We want to relax the jaw. And just feeling the present vitality of this moment. What is it to be alive? What does it feel like to be alive in this moment? And perhaps we'll do a, a scan, a body scan starting at the top of our heads. Can we feel any sensations in the scalp? Maybe some tingling or heat or coolness vibration, whatever's there, just noticing, receiving whatever's there. Bring our awareness down into the eyes, relaxing the eyes, feeling whatever tension is around the eyes, relaxing, opening, softening, Allowing the eye and the wall to just relax in the sockets. And 
noticing whatever sensations are there without judging, just inviting awareness. To let these sensations be known. Moving down into the cheeks. Relaxing the cheeks and around the mouth, the lips. The jaw, resting the tongue. Moving down into the neck, relaxing the throat. Do we have our throat closed or is it open? Relaxing the throat. The shoulders. Letting the weight of the shoulders just relax down. Spine in the back, shoulders open. Allowing the chest to open. Moving down through the arms. Relaxing the upper arms. The elbows, lower arms. Bring awareness down to the hands. Different sensations in the palms, the fingers. Maybe some heat, coolness, tingling, numbness, whatever's there, just letting awareness know it's there with kindness, with spaciousness. Feeling the whole, both arms resting, relaxed, letting go of any holding in the arms, the hands. Moving back up with the chest, putting whatever sensations are in the front of the chest. Perhaps feeling the movement of the breath. Going down to the belly, relaxing the belly. Letting go of any holding in the belly. Perhaps feeling the breath moving in and out of the belly. Nice, slow, deep breaths down to the belly. Helps relax and calm the body and the mind.
the upper back and lower back, bringing awareness to the back of the body. Feeling the energy in the spine. Moving through the spine as a support for the body. Feeling the hip bones again, grounded, stable. On the cushion, on the chair. Feeling the pressure points. And just noticing whatever sensations are there. Moving down through the legs, the thighs, the knees. Opening, relaxing, opening, creating space in the joints. Be down through the calves. the ankles and the feet, the toes. And just noticing what's there with awareness, with kindness. Noticing you may perhaps pleasant, unpleasant sensations, neutral sensations. Oops, widening the awareness now to include the whole body, whole body sitting with light touch awareness, just feeling the resonance of being embodied in this human experience in this moment right now.
with kindness and spaciousness, with gratitude for having this body that has taken us this far in our life. Feeling into the space around us, this body and space, with all these sensations arriving and passing. And within this container of body, you can feel some fluidity with the boundaries between body and space. Just exploring with curiosity in your own experience. Within this body framework, sounds will arise and pass away. Thoughts, emotions, just passing through this body. This body is able to hold it all. Not holding on to anything. And within this body, the breath moves with its own rhythm, giving life to every cell in the body. The sacred breath of life. Receiving whatever is here with openness, with spaciousness, with kindness.
and move on with on your own pace with this investigation and exploration. With whatever's arising in your experience. Checking in, releasing, softening the belly, the jaw, the shoulders. Opening a little bit more, softening a little bit more. Letting go of any holding. Letting go of any tension. into the rhythm of the breath moving in and out of the body. Feeling grounded, steady. Allows the heart to relax.
in the last few minutes of the sit, the invitation to widen our awareness again to the Sangha, to the space around us, to the other beings we're sitting with, and that wholesome energy field of creating beautiful merits in doing this practice together. Perhaps sending some well wishes to each other for health, for happiness, for well being. Radiating out that energy to each other as we sit here together. Well, wishes for a peaceful heart and mind. And just feeling into that field of energy around us, in us. giving us support and nourishment. As practitioners know, we know very well that without a Sangha, we cannot go far. The Sangha is our body, and we are like the cells of the same organism. When we walk, we walk as one. When we sit, we sit as one. We move along as a river. Feeling in, checking in, constantly kind of just, oh, how is it right now? Do I need to move my shoulders, my spine? Does the body feel open, closed? Just noticing what's there. Do I need to move a little bit? <laughs> Movement, getting to know the body, move. Maybe taking, raising up your arms a little bit, stretching the sides of your body. Yeah, feels good. <laughs> okay, the spine a little bit. Yeah, during the day, just take these stretch breaks. It really helps to loosen it up. 